Rainworld's workshop is now four months old. No major modding advancement has happened sadly, but some cool mods have released over this time. As always there is a downpour spoiler warning, but now let's get to the mods. Passage Tracker by Alex the Dragon adds a new UI element when holding down the map button. It displays all available passages and your current slug cat's progress towards obtaining them. It will also notify you once you've completed a passage mid-cycle. It's a pretty simple and useful mod, especially when you forget what progress you have towards certain passages. Pokeballs by Maxi Mol adds Pokeballs from hit video game series Pokemon. These balls can uncommonly be found in scavenger stashes and they work how they do in Pokemon. Whereas if you throw it at a creature, it will be absorbed into the ball and will have a chance to be trapped there until you throw it again. Any tameable creatures, mainly lizards, will be instantly tamed when successfully caught. Most other creatures will remain hostile or neutral towards the slug cat when released again. There is a bit more depth to the mod, so I'd recommend sticking it on in your playthrough and finding out the nuances. But overall it acts as a very fun creature transport system. I especially like the animations and sound effects. Community Gallery Region by The Modding Academy is an unconventional new region mod. All of the rooms featured in the region were made as part of the community event called Level Editor Month, which is in the same vein as Rainworld Art Month. This event was hosted at the Rainworld Modding Academy Discord server. The server is a great place to learn about Rainworld modding, it has a greater number of channels and lower population when compared to Rainmod's main Discord server, which makes it easier to discuss many modding topics and receive the help and feedback you might be looking for. So yeah, join the server if you're interested in doing Rainworld modding yourself. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Sorry about the tangent, let's get back to the region. So the community gallery region is not really meant to be an actual fully fleshed out region. It is quite literally a gallery, where you can basically admire the rooms without the fear of rain and creatures. I'm currently displaying my favourite rooms and their creators on screen now. Obviously I'm not going to showcase all the rooms in the region. I'll leave a link to a full walkthrough by Wild in the description, as I think they went in every room. But yeah, definitely an interesting mod. I wouldn't recommend it for people wanting a fun challenge, or an interesting thematic region. But if you want to see some cool rooms, go ahead. Shiny Shield Mask by Shiny Kelp, original mod by Garax, adds new functionality to Vulture Mask. The first function is they now act as armor to the slug cat. If a spear is thrown at the slug cat's head while wearing a mask, the spear will be deflected and the mask will be dropped, providing the slug cat with a bit of armor when fighting scavengers. However, body shots still annihilate the slug cat. Now elite scavengers can also be given this power, making them much more formidable. Their masks also scare away lizards now, it baffles me that they don't have these powers in Vanilla Rainworld. I guess the elite scavengers deserve a position in the fumble downpour creatures pile. It's good that this mod fixes these inconsistencies though. Solace by Musical Miracle adds a new slug cat called The Friend. Wait a sec, I already covered The Friend. What the hell? Go watch my second monthly mod showcase for context of The Friend. Well, The Friend mod has now been renamed to Solace due to its expansion in scope. Before I get into the big content, here are some small changes to the friend and the general world. Firstly, the friend can now crawl on poles. This is from the code of the slug cat Noir Kato, which has its own entry later on in the video. Friend's extended jump has also been nerfed. I'm kind of sad because it makes the character a bit less fun to move around with, but there is a remix setting to revert it. As for the general snowy world, the mother and baby lizards have been given natural spawns, at least in outskirts that is, so you don't need external tools to spawn them. And there is a new creature variant, the Snow Spider. This pipsqueak is basically a large wolf spider. It is incredibly tanky, requiring 6 or 7 spears to kill. But like any insect, it dies to poison very easily. I also think its bite is 100% lethal, making them pretty dangerous. And with the cold of the Solace world, there is a new famine mechanic. What this does is it depletes many food sources the game usually has. For example, batflies are now deleted from the game. And now blue fruits have a high chance of becoming famined. Eating these famined fruits gives one fourth of the food pit, but also has a chance just to give none at all. The beloved Rainworld enemies, the centipedes, have not adapted well to the cold yet, and so have become famine centipedes. They are still the same creature, so they function the same, but are now very thin and blue in colour. They are much weaker, taking less spears to kill, but give significantly less food when eaten. I'm actually a big fan of this change, as it nerfs the food centipedes gives, which is usually a crazy amount, but does it in a fun way with their new redesign. Now we can talk about the new slug cat, the poacher. 
This little fella is actually a slug pup, and so has many slug pup properties. It's smaller and weaker than an adult slug cat, and only needs two food to hibernate and can stall one. When eating one of its favourite food, it does a little dance, which is unfamined blue fruit. It wears a lizard skull, kind of like a shell, with the Dragon Slayer symbol painted at the top. Fun fact, this slug cat was going to be called Dragon Slayer, but there is already a slug cat called Dragon Slayer, which is still in the works. Or I hope it's in the works. Anyway, this slug cat is light pink in colour, and is noticeably bald. I mean, compared to other snow-based slug cats. I think the poacher's design is easily the best modded slug cat design. It's really cool and unique, and lends into the character being a merciless hunter, yet incredibly vulnerable. I'm stating the obvious here, but the poacher is not very friendly with lizards. This means, unlike the friend, lizards like the mother lizard are much more dangerous. As for the actual reputation values, the poacher is neutral towards every creature. Now onto the poacher's abilities. Firstly, the lizard skull acts like a shield. Crouching down fully covers the poacher with the skull. This makes it practically immune to spear attacks, but this isn't really useful since fighting scavs as this character is pretty difficult. The poacher's skull also protects it from bites. If it is grabbed non-lethally by a creature, the poacher is not fully incapacitated, meaning it can throw items and spears at its assailant. This is also not very useful, as getting grabbed as the poacher mostly results in death. This ability is also glitchy and can softlock your game if grabbed by creatures like vultures, as you're technically not in a game over state. Onto the poacher's main ability, the crafting. Unlike Gourmand, poacher's crafting is very simple. For example, one rock plus one rock equals a spear, and then a rock plus a spear equals an electric spear. It is in its uncharged state, but it can be charged on the many unfamined centipedes around. It can use any spear to pry open cherry bombs, which causes their seeds to detach. These seeds can be thrown for a very weak explosion, or be crafted into more useful things. For example, them plus a spear equals a fire spear. These fire spears are nerfed versions of the Rubicon ones, dealing less bonus damage than usual, and providing slight heat to the poacher. Cherry seeds can also be combined with a blue fruit to make a lantern, which is obviously useful in the cold. It's worth mentioning that the poacher gets colder faster than Saint and Friend, due to its lack of fur, so finding heat sources is very important. The poacher's most interesting recipe is cherry seed plus rock, which makes a trap. These traps can be filled with certain ammunition, and will detonate when a creature enters their proximity. They don't need to be made with cherry seeds, and so can be made with other forms of ammunition. So what are the ammunitions? Well, there is cherry seed, which gives the trap a damaging explosion effect. If the trap is fully filled with three seeds, it seems to deal about two survivor spears worth of damage. Another ammunition type is flash fruit and jellyfish which can give the trap stun properties. A target caught in a fully charged stun trap will be paralysed for a very long time. The final ammunition type is spore puffs and mushrooms. These will make the trap release a spore cloud when triggered. The size and duration of the spore cloud depends on how much spore ammunition was used. This spore cloud is obviously toxic to insect enemies. You can mix and match trap ammunition, but I found this to be pretty useless, so it's better just to fill a trap with a single resource. And that's all of the poacher's abilities. I'm just going to go on the record and say Poacher is my favourite modded slug cat so far. I think it's because of its simplicity. It doesn't have any crazy abilities like flight or a double jump. It just has some useful crafting recipes and a kind of shield. The famine mechanics makes this slug cat actually kind of hard to play, even with its whole three food pips. And I found myself gravitating towards indoor heat areas, rather than brushing past them due to Poacher's cold weakness. I actually felt like I was trying to survive for once in Rainworld. It like brought back the old survivor feelings, you know? Friend and Poacher can access Shaded Citadel and Uncollapsed Five Pebbles. But apart from some renames, I don't think there's any new dialogue or anything. And in my testing, Poacher was incredibly buggy. So bear these in mind if you want a full campaign experience. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to see where Solace goes. I really enjoy the ideas that seem to come from it. Noir Kato by Noir Kato <laughs> adds a new slug cat that is more cat than slug. Their preferred method of moving is on all fours, which gives them a movement similar to the friend slug cat from Solace. They have high mobility and can crawl on poles. I really like how fluid this slug cat is. Is it even a slug cat? Who knows? Its great sprite design and fluid movement makes me feel like I'm playing an actual cat. And its model has dynamic ears which look amazing. As for its abilities, it has three. The first is a poor slash, which deals minor damage to targets. This damage can become increased the more slashes it does, in a sort of funky combo move. It's a pretty risky attack compared to a spear, since it doesn't seem to stun the targets. It has Artificer's Maul, but this time it does two bites instead of one, which is kind of appealing to me for some reason. 
its final ability is activated when pressing the left alt button. This might be the most crazy ability any slug cat has ever been given. A designated meow button. Mod of the month. Mod of the month. In all seriousness, I do like the effort put into the slug cat, so I'll give it. I'll give it mod of the month. Sure. Let There Be Light by Ducklord gives Slugcat Neuron Glow when in certain dark arenas. I'm not sure what the more Slugcat team were doing when designing pitch black arenas. I guess they got used to the darkness of the basement. So yeah, this mod makes these arenas and challenges slightly more playable. The Messiah by Silky adds Nico from Hit Game One Shot. I haven't actually played One Shot myself, I'm so I'm not too in the know about this mod. But the Nico Slugcat gets a light bulb which it has to lug around. Fun fact! One of Five Pebbles' white pearl readings references the World Machine, which is allegedly a one-shot reference. I think this slug cat has potential, but the light bulb was way too heavy, which made my testing of this slug cat very short-lived. You can actually destroy the light bulb, which causes your game to crash, which is funny. So if you're a one-shot geezer, you might want to play this mod. Aim Helper by Ori Lin gives slug cat enhanced aiming abilities, kind of like the Hunter x Hunter Nen Technique N. This mod has the best remix interface ever made, and so is highly customizable. It aims to be the best aim assistant mod on the workshop, which I'm, I'm gonna be honest it probably is. I tested it with mouse however and it didn't really seem to work, I think it might be a controller only thing. Citation needed though. In the background you can see where the aim assist locks on, and Slugcat's ability to aim anywhere. Overall a very solid mod. I'm not really a fan of aim improving mods, since they make the game a lot easier. If you are looking for one, this is probably the best option. The Escort by Urufu Doggo. This blue fella definitely has the most unhinged custom slug cat movement. Being able to infinitely roll with increasing speeds, do a cool flip when it pounces, or do a drop kick move when pouncing from a roll or a slide. The Escort can also pick up creatures in one hand, and you can throw them off buildings which is the funniest thing ever. This slug cat specialises in kinetic damage gameplay, being able to damage enemies with slides and drop kicks. It also gains Battle Hype, which is a buff that increases damage and speed when in combat. This Slug Cat is actually wild to play. I feel like I haven't fully grasped like the power of the movement, but this Slug Cat can get in some crazy situations. Its main premise is the build system, where the Escort can change its abilities to six different options. The Brawler build does more damage at the cost of movement speed. The Brawler's main ability is the power to shiv a lizard that the Escort is holding. I guess he's British. I've just had this Calypso, it is minging. The Escort's Deflector build gives it the ability to parry attacks with a roll, pounce or slide. Doing so successfully gives the next attack three times damage. In my testing, the King Vulture couldn't hit me, so I just did some funky maneuvers on it, which was fun. The Escapist build gives the Escort the ability to escape from the grab. This is an actual build for Tories. Just play a more fun build, come on. The Railgunner build gives the Escort the ability to throw two items at the same time. I think it's supposed to deal more damage, but in my testing it didn't really do much. But a cool idea for a build. And the final build is the Speedster build, where if you do advanced movement, the Escort starts to build up in power. The next time it slides, the power is released, giving the Escort a speed buff, with the potency depending on how much speed was built up. There is also a secret Gilded build, and also a secret Slugcat in this mod. Honestly, I don't know how to unlock these, I guess you can find out. Overall a pretty good mod, I like how much it gets updated, it gets like updated like <laughs> once a week, which is a good thing since the developer hasn't abandoned it or anything. Plus you can play the mod at a later date and enjoy the updates. So yeah, definitely a fun and crazy slug cat, I do recommend. Room Randomizer by Floof Cheeks randomizes the connections between rooms in Rainworld. This makes navigating actual insanity, like genuinely if you want to experience insanity, play this mod. What's great is that it has a remix interface that lets you change how bearable or unbearable it is. Also players in for the best experience. Wow, what a long mod showcase. I guess I couldn't shut up about the solace. I sure do hope there's no new segment that makes the video making process longer. Wait a sec, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Dress my slug cat section? What?
Okay, now it's actually the end of the video. There was going to be a no commentary section in this video, but I got unlucky with the mods in that section and none of them really worked, so it'll be in the next one though. Also, Outsider is still broken. Please, I want to play it.